you know, they have a problem with that. They, they, I, I mean, perhaps it is because, and this is my uh, conjecture, I'm not saying that this is what I believe, but this, the reason why Christianity might have a problem with that is because they believe that naturally every person is born is a born sinner. Uh, so in order for you to establish that Jesus has died for your sins, uh, I think that other uh, principle or argument has to exist, which is we are all born sinners. Islam, Islam doesn't accept that. Islam doesn't say you are born sinner. Islam says you're born as you're born. Uh, you should. You are not a sinner uh, when you're born. However, you become a sinner when you commit a sin, voluntarily, uh, not involuntarily. Like if, if if somebody put a gun to your head and said do this and you did it, you're not liable for that. But you had the free will and you had two options, equally and equitably presented to you, uh, and you chose the option that is considered sinful. Only in those instances you're considered sinful. And then to atone for your sin, all you need to do in Islam is you need to turn to God and ask God to you know, forgive you. And God will forgive you. God is not in the business of hurting or punishing human beings, as the Quran says. So Muslims, they believe that all prophets are ma'asum uh, anil ma'asiyah, which means you know, they are protected from sin. And they're not protected uh, from sin because of their, you know, just by virtue of being humans. No, because they were selectively or quintessentially chosen by God to perform his mission. You know, so God specifically selected these prophets to perform his mission. It was in his best interest to also make sure that they are uh, distanced from all forms of sin. Right? Because then people would say, well, you know, you, you had... Uh, Jesus speaking for you and this is what he did or David or Solomon and this is why in Islam we believe that David and Solomon they did not fornicate they did not commit adultery they did not do anything they are prophets of God uh, as opposed to the narratives mentioned in the Bible which is you know they had so many uh, bonds women and so many uh, you know slave girls and they had this and that this is all nullified in Islam um, same thing with the Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is considered, uh, you know, free of sin or protected from sin. So when people accuse him of, let's say, terrorism uh, or of anything else, number one is unfounded. Uh, I mean, I can give you a one-hour-long lecture on terrorism and Islam. How these two things are extremely paradoxical. It makes no sense. It's like saying large and small, male and female. I mean, a person can be either male or female. It can't be both at the same time. You can't go to a Dunkin' Donuts and say, give me large and small coffee. The person will be confused, you know. These are two uh, dyadic forces, I mean, opposite forces. Islam, the very meaning of Islam is the peace. So how can the peace be the terrorism? It makes no sense. Uh, linguistically, and also theologically, it makes no sense. So when uh, Non-Muslims deliberately, or you know, you know, without bad and malignant intentions, say that Prophet Muhammad was the epitome or the embodiment of terrorism and put a you know bomb on his turban. It's extremely offensive to uh, just you know uh, history, uh, and also it's extremely offensive to Muslims because you know it's contrary to the reality and it's in its affront to their faith. And they know where it's coming from, the background. You know, this whole, you know, Quran is all about, you know, the, the, the new fitna movie that came out and the, the commotion behind it. I mean, Muslims look at all of this and we're like, okay, what's next? I mean, are you going to go around saying that every Muslim by virtue of him or her being a Muslim is a terrorist? I mean, they have gone as much as to that extent, uh, you know, to, to defile Muslims, to condemn them. And this is all false. It's completely false. Everything in Islam is about peace. Uh, one historian he said that actually, if you look throughout the entire history, the amount of people that were killed during the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and outside of his time, you will find that his time were, was the time when less people were killed compared to all other times. And his, his thing was, he wanted to uh, avoid having to fight wars as much as possible. And I'll give you one example. Um, when he went to Mecca, you know, he lived in Mecca for 13 years. Then he went to Medina, and he was, he was, he was kicked out of Mecca. Uh, they were persecuting him. They killed his, uh, you know, his followers, 
brutally. I mean, one of the female followers, they put a spear in her private part and they killed her. And this is not terrorism, by the way. You know, nobody ever talks about that. As a Muslim, if you die uh, from somebody else's act of violence, it's not considered terrorism. You're a victim, you know, or something happened, was a mistake. But if, if anything like that were to happen to other people, from Muslim, there's no benefit of the doubt that it might have been an accident or anything. Uh, and even if Muslims don't do it, they're you know, blamed that they've done it. So anyway, when he went to Medina, after eight years, he went back to Mecca. Uh, when he was entering into Mecca, there was a potential of conflict. There were 10,000 or you know, uh, Muslims entering into Mecca. There was a potential of conflict because the, the, the disbelievers in Mecca did not want, want to forgo the city. Uh, so what the Prophet did was, he told all his followers, uh, the way they used to fight wars or measure up exact quantity of the army was by coming at night and spying on people, spying on you know, your, your enemies. Um, and because how would you determine the number or the quantity of your enemy during nighttime? Because during those days, people used to have campfires you know, to keep themselves warm. Arabian nights were very cold, so to keep themselves warm, they used to have campfire. And usually around each campfire, this was a trend, they would have like around 10 people sitting. So people would just come and count the campfires. And based on those camp the number of campfires, they would calculate, okay, this is the number of people we're uh, up against. So the prophet, he knew that this was gonna happen, so he told each one of his followers that I want every one of you to have a campfire for yourself. Instead of having one campfire shared by 10 people. So when they come, they will calculate 10,000 people, campfires, and they would say, oh, we are up against 100,000 people. And immediately they would say, we don't have the force and the might to deal with that. So the next day they came and said, you know what, we wanna actually have a truce. So they had a truce. That's why in Islamic history, this was considered the bloodless conquest. There was no bloodshed uh, during this conquest. So this was the uh, you know, outlook and the principle and you know the main uh, way of doing things of the Prophet Muhammad. So then, when you know the non-Muslim world who barely know anything about the Prophet comes out and attributes his heinous things to him, the Muslim world gets very upset. And also in Islam, uh, we're supposed to respect all prophets. Uh, like if somebody says like the Da Vinci Code, it's a problematic thing for Muslims as well as for Christians. You know, Muslims believe that Jesus did not commit any adultery. So if they say, well, you know, he had a mistress and, you know, blah, 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 with the children with her, it's an affront to also Islam as much as it is to Christianity. Uh, so that is also a belief system in Islam, that all prophets are protected from sin and they ought to be revered and respected more than normal human beings because they were quintessentially selected human beings by God to perform his mission. Uh, and therefore, anything that is... Uh, Unbecom I mean, anything that is, uh, you know, not good or like, you know, anything that is uh, of a nature that is not acceptable to human being attributed to these prophets is not accepted in Islam. It's not accepted in Islam. And Muslims, they tend to love their prophet, you know, from the very core of their heart. And when something like this happens to them, you know, uh, actually Muslims are told to love their prophet more than they love themselves. Uh, because uh, the, the, the purpose of uh, Muslims is that they should try to emulate his character as much as possible. So Muslims are told to love him and emulate him as much as possible. So when that, when you have this role model being destroyed, you know, things like that happen. So uh, I hope that answers your question.